Attachment. Uh, here's the thing. We don't do attachment styles here because it is unnecessary. It's not necessary to label you because it, basically you have a three-step process with the attachment style theory. Theory. So the first step, let's look at your behaviors. Okay, based on your behaviors, we're going to give you a label. Now, if these behaviors aren't making you happy, now we got to talk about the behaviors that you're going to have to do in order to start being happier. Here's my method. Let's look at your behaviors. Are your behaviors making you happy? No. Here are the behaviors that are going to make you happy. I took out that additional step that was entirely unnecessary, but do you know what it did? It gave you a stigma. You wore that label like an STD. You went around asking yourself, when do I disclose my attachment style? Do I do it on the first date? Do I have to wait four dates? Should we be more serious before you talk about attachment styles? Put attachment styles where they belong in the garbage. Because here's the thing, you can change, you can change your brain structure, you can shrink your amygdala, reducing your capacity to feel stress, fear, and anxiety, you can change your DNA. People who had their DNA code tested when they were depressed and then retested when they were not depressed had a change in their DNA code. So attachment styles, uh-uh. Come talk to me about behaviors. What are the behaviors that are happening? That is where we're going to get shit done. But attachment styles, we don't need to talk about that because you don't need to label yourself. All you need to do is change your behaviors. Hello, London, Ontario. Ah, uh, going through a breakup and you're putting a smile on my face. Thank you. Hello, Rainbow. Hello. One week broken up, no contact, missing him so much. I mean, even though he hurts me, you're not doing your reading. You're, you're not reading Come Back Queen to mend your broken heart. You're not reading No More Assholes to start looking towards the future and planning who you're going to get with and get excited about who you're going to get with because it's going to be so much better. Nice. Thank you. London, Ontario in the house. Guys, who wants a notification when I go live? Say hi. I do. Where are my newbies at? Do we have newbies in the house? Advice for if a guy texts me every day but hasn't made plans to see me since the first date one week ago. Have you proposed anything? How come you're not making plans? How come you're not saying, hey, let's do this? Also, why are you hung up on one person? Have you, are, you're not reading No More Assholes. Because if you're reading No More Assholes, you're not just focused on this one person. Your field is open. You are talking to multiple people because through talking to multiple people, you will choose the right one for yourself. But focusing on one person at a time is really how you waste time when you're dating. Um, here you're all hung up on this one person who's texting you every day, texting you so much. And then the one day they don't, you're crushed <laughs> or, or they're not making plans yet. You're, oh, you're, you're like, what's going on? Doesn't he like me enough? Why are you hung up on someone you don't know? Why are you not seeing more than one person at a time? New hairstyle, not necessarily new hair, but new hairstyle. Uh... How does someone book a coaching session with you? So go into my bio, click on the link tree. Uh, you're going to see the second button is the coaching button. Click on that. It takes you to a page. Read what's on there. Follow the instructions. You can book yourself in for a session. Amazing. You have a beautiful mind. Thank you. He flips moods without reason. He says he doesn't know why, then stops including me in daily tasks. It sounds like he would need a coaching session, my love. There's a lot that I would need to unpack to help you understand the situation and how to navigate it. Chantal, completely in love with Fix That Shit on chapter 15. Uh, my newbies, my loves, my new people, those of you who want a notification when I go live, I saw you. Click my picture up here once or twice, you're gonna get a pop-up and the pop-up is a bell. Click on the bell when you do that, say I just did. 
how about processing oh uh so that kind of stuff my love i don't talk about on lives sorry uh if you wanted me to help you with that we would have to do that in coaching sessions is the contact rule the best way to move on is are you meaning like the no contact rule it is if you feel like them having access to you is interrupting your growth and evolution and healing so if them being able to text you puts you into a spin every time you get a message from them then go no contact and block them you hit the bell Are we really going for a walk on the woods? That was yesterday. Yeah. We should do that again sometime. Hello. Hello, Fatima. Advice to figure out what your values are to present to a new partner. I'm 27 years old. So your fundamental values are the important things to figure out. Those are the things that absolutely need to align. You got. You have to ask yourself, what what is it that has to align right like i want to get married well then that has to align you can't get in a relationship with somebody who doesn't want to get married i want to have children that has to align you can't get into a relationship with somebody who doesn't want kids so you got to think about those things that has to be aligned those are your fundamental values that's what you present on a first date before you get any further because you know some people say oh no like it's too early on a first date because you're going to scare them off oh you mean you're going to scare off the person who's not ready for a relationship doesn't want to get married and doesn't want to have kids is that the one you're afraid of scaring off because if you are afraid of scaring that one off so you don't have that conversation early on you see them more you like them more then you have this conversation you realize you're not aligned now what do you do like now what do you do do you step back from someone you like but isn't aligned with your fundamental values do you play the hoping game and hope that one day they're going to change their mind do you reduce your own fundamental values to try and fit with him only to realize five six seven ten years down the road you wish you hadn't on the first date you guys put your fundamental values on the table you will scare away the person who is not aligned do you cancel married couples or do you just help singles in the dating uh so like i saw licky dog she's like everybody absolutely everybody uh single in a relationship through a breakup wanting to leave a relationship trying to clarify if you should stay or go uh how to date how to get started um navigating dating what should i text what should i say i'm interested in this person i don't want to blow it whatever it is you're going through that you need help clarifying or navigating i help you with i am a life coach but i niche in dating and relationships because a lot of other things fall into you know like like the things that get in your way of a healthy relationship are things you need to fix in life give me a second you guys He told me he wanted to get married and have kids, then cheated. I don't get it, now I blocked him. Good. All my notifications are on, but I don't get notified. I don't know why that's happening. Uh, so the prices for my coaching are in the link to my bio. So uh, go into the link to my bio, hit that coaching button, read everything on that page. You can see I have different packages too that you can check out. Uh, apart from the overactive amygdala, why does emotional reactivity happen so much in relationships? Uh, it could be sensitivities from the way that you were raised as well. Um, you know, my, for instance, uh, I am uh, very overly sensitive to people who might be critical. 
um, or a lack of praise. I, I wouldn't say am, I would say was, certainly was, because I would come home with a good grade from school and my mom would be like, see, doesn't it feel good? Don't you want to do that more? And, and what I wanted was good job, right? And, and it, that need to hear that good job, it, it just kind of stuck with me. So that can condition you, right? Like I wanted my partners to be proud of me because it was, it was so hard to get my mom to be proud of me. This isn't relationship wise, but my mom and I are fighting. How should I get along with her again? Um, you can't control other people. The only person you can control is yourself. So you can make sure that you're meditating and being non-reactive and just hold your boundaries, right? Like, um, you guys are so sweet. Hold your boundaries, hold your boundaries and don't let her mistreat you. Always make it like her choice, whether or not the two of you are going to be around each other. It's, it's dependent on her behavior. If you can treat me like a normal person, if you can treat me well, then we can spend time together. But when you're not, we can't. Tips for long distance relationships. I have a guide for you. It's in the link to my bio. It's a free guide. You can go, you, everybody in a long distance relationship here, go and get that free guide in the link to my bio. It has tips on how to have intimacy, maintain intimacy, build intimacy, uh, conflict resolution, how to work on yourself other than going to therapy. You can grab fix that shit, do what's in there. If you're in a relationship, you can get no more assholes, do what's in there if you're single. Uh, there's tons of stuff in there for you to practice that is elevating for yourself. Uh, the, this is homework that helps you heal, helps you understand and elevate yourself, helps, helps you increase your confidence, helps you control your own emotions, take responsibility for yourself. Hello, love, Ingrid. Is it possible for first love to last until the end? I know there will be tribulations. Everything is possible. Some people, honestly, they meet when they're nine years old, uh, become boyfriend and girlfriend when they're 14, get married when they're 20, live happily ever after. So everything is possible. I'm in Ontario. How do I confront him to ask why I barely get the bare minimum? He hardly makes time. What is taking up his time? Is it video games? Is it going out with friends and drinking? Is it work? Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of variables why this could be happening. I'm not going to immediately jump into the bandwagon of he's wrong for not having time if he doesn't have much time because there isn't much time left over between work and, you know, being a baby daddy. Uh, maintaining his home, then what's taking up his time are all valid. So, you know, I don't know if that's if that's why. Uh, I would suggest a coaching session if you want me to unpack your particular situation. But if the reason why your partner doesn't have time is because they're hardworking, you got into a relationship with somebody who's hardworking and ambitious. And this is what happens in these relationships you can't pull them away from their responsibilities because that actually makes them feel worse about themselves. When they look at all the things that need to be done that aren't getting done because they're pulling themselves off of that to maintain you because you're demanding more time than they have, but they're, they're sacrificing things that need to get done to appease you. You are diminishing him as a person. He is feeling like he is accomplishing less. Um, he needs a partner, not somebody who tries to pull him from his responsibilities. So always beware, guys, of getting into a relationship with somebody who is hardworking and ambitious if you think you need a lot of time. Uh, if you are independent, this is the ideal partner for you. But if you are dependent on them for your well-being, this is not the ideal partner for you. Oh, it does it. Oh, you guys are so cute. I'm sorry. I didn't change the text when I did the um, when I started my live. So yeah, so yesterday I said we're taking a walk and I took you guys for a walk in the woods. I've had a couple of people now comment um, about I thought we were going for a walk. <laughs> sorry. Sorry, I didn't I didn't change that. 
how do I bring up the idea of a throuple with my girlfriend? Uh, I don't know. Might not be a good idea if this is something she's brought up herself or something she seems interested in herself. Um, married and my husband had cheated so no I don't trust him would we still work out we have three kids uh, I would suggest a coaching session my love I see a lot of questions here that would require a coaching session for me to unpack in order to help you understand um, because this is you know how am I gonna make things uh, or, or, or like talk to my partner about things that I need more details, but I can't get all these details on a live. If saying they're not sure yet if they'll get married and no, uh, they're more a day at a time person. So saying they're not sure yet if they'll get married, um, it depends how old they are. Depends how old they are. Um, if they are under 27, you know, he, here's the thing though like marriage is starting to get a stigma because it's costly right like one day uh for the most part is going to be around twenty thousand dollars the way people are doing weddings now and people who are uh, efficient with their money don't want to spend twenty thousand dollars on a day so uh this is something that tends to turn men off for marriage is the expense all the stress all the work that goes into it for a day. So you can say to them, what gives you doubts? What what do you think holds you back? And really get uh really get some idea of how they feel, what they think, like like what is it about it? Uh and then if you really want to get married, but for them it's like it's just it costs so much money, it seems like such a waste, then if you are open to the idea of reformulating how you would do your wedding day like have a small wedding have a wedding that costs no more than five thousand dollars uh you know and that's like i'm putting like a high sticker price um i did city hall like literally our wedding day cost a few hundred dollars in total um the most expensive part of that wedding day was my dress it was five hundred dollars so uh you know think about Think about the cost. Think about how you can make it easy. When it comes to men, the easier you make it, the more likely you are to get it. I do. I do a court wedding. Yes, if you be down. Yes. married 12 years he says i yell i'm passionate how we how can we get healthy you can try doing what's in fix that shit um you know like level up the way you are showing up in the relationship the way you understand each other the way you communicate with each other Uh, should I tell my partner I'm thinking of leaving because he's avoiding anything regarding his open case? I would suggest a coaching session first. <laughs> I bring up insecurity sometimes in healthier ways. He's projecting how I used to be how to fix us you can do coaching or you can do with some fix that shit guy i'm talking to hasn't talked to me all day and hardly yesterday thoughts why aren't you reading no more assholes and seeing more than one person at a time right you're saying talking that means not kissing and having sex right you are using a no kissing for three months dating rule and not getting hung up on someone you don't know well enough yet When we argue, he makes comments like, I'm a bad boyfriend, everything is my fault, to make me feel bad. So here's the thing with that one. 
when you argue, is it always his fault? Is Are you coming to him and saying, hey, I feel some kind of way and you need to do something about it? And is that the scope of every conversation you have with him? Are you always going to him and saying, I'm in a negative place and you need to change in order for that to change? So this is where, you know, people get into this loop where they're tired of having these conversations and they start shutting down these conversations going, fine. Because here's like, they, they've gone through so many of these conversations where you say, I'm feeling this kind of way, you need to do something about it. And they might defend their position. And, but you keep coming at them with the same conversation. So now they're tired of defending their position. So now they just go, all right, it's fine. It's me. It's always me. Right. And so there's what I hear in this. I'm a bad boyfriend. Everything is my fault is frustration. So what is going on? Did you get in a relationship with a selfish short term thinker? I don't know. You haven't done a session. Are you in a relationship with a generous long term thinker, but you don't see what they do. And instead you zero in on what you feel they're not doing. So you're not feeling any gratitude for what they are doing. You're hyper focusing on what they're not doing and demonizing for the things that they're not doing. Are you being codependent? Are you looking to them to be a therapist? I don't know. So unless you do a session, I can't figure this out. So when we argue, he makes comments like I'm a bad boyfriend, everything is my fault to make me feel bad. I don't know if that's the case because I don't know what's happening. But if you want me to help you clarify, are you with a bad boyfriend or do you guys just need to relationship better? Come get a coaching session so that I can unpack what's happening and give you direction either way. If you want to figure out if he's a selfish short term thinker, you can grab no more assholes. There are 12 character traits. Grade his paper. If he's eight or less, this is a selfish short term thinker. Get rid of him. Get yourself a generous long term thinker. This book will help you do that. If he's a nine or more out of 12, you can get fixed that shit and do what's in this book and learn to relationship so that this defensiveness and the conflict, right? Like, like you argue and then there's the defensiveness. You want to get rid of the conflict so you can get rid of the defensiveness. Should I leave a partner that is avoidant of his problems due to his PTSD? So he has PTSD and he's not dealing with his mental health. And so he's not taking responsibility for the things he should be taking responsibility for. And this is adding additional strain to his mental health. Do not stay in a relationship with somebody who doesn't address their mental health. Do not stay in a relationship with somebody who isn't responsible. Don't be in a relationship with somebody that you can't build a life with because they're not taking responsibility for what they need to be responsible for. Is there a number of years after which you've been alone at which time you should give up? No. I love how you make fixed session chapters simple and sweet. Yes, I do. Yeah, so in all my books, guys, in all my books, the chapters are short, um, right? The chapters are short. <laughs> Some people are like, oh, I don't have time to read books. I'm like, baby girl, put it by the toilet. You're gonna read it every time you poop. You're gonna finish a chapter every time you poop. Does the no kissing rule count if we are long distance and we'll be meeting in a couple months? It counts if you're getting the level of attention you want to be getting from a boyfriend when you're together. So three months is an assessment period. Are you attentive and consistent with your attentiveness over the course of three months? Thank you for the rose. Guys, who wants a notification when I go live? Say, I do. Do your books relate to LGBTQ uh, dynamics? Anyways, um, so yes and no, yes and no. I do have uh, people come and tell me that it's been helpful in their gay relationships. My advice and my books have been helpful in their gay relationships. I do, hello my I do's, hello my I do's. Uh, so here's what you're going to do, my loves. Those of you who want a notification when I go live, click my picture up here once or twice. You're going to get a pop-up. In the pop-up is a bell. Click on the bell. When you do that, say, I just did. Hi, 
Husband is more advanced in speaking. I get frustrated. How can we have a healthy communication level? Uh, fake that shit is really going to help you do that. Fake that shit helps you understand how to communicate well with your partner. Ah, separated and rekindling. I've been using the three month rule. Good rule to have in this situation, 100%. Don't take them back until you see the change. No kissing for three months helps you see the change. Don't just believe they change because they say they change. Makeup tutorial. Uh, it's all Tarte, by the way. T-A-R-T-E. I love Tarte makeup. Guys, I'm so sad. Le Chateau is pretty much done. All the clothes are sold. The online store is closing this weekend. That's okay. I got I got lots of clothes, including this dress. Oh, I'm gonna be wearing this dress like every day all summer. Uh, I didn't know if I should break up with my boyfriend because he doesn't let me see my friends or hang out with them. Definitely break up. That's called isolation. Isolation is abusive. Do not stay with an abusive partner. Definitely break up. Make a tutorial. No foundation, no powder, blush, eyes, lips. That's it. That's all you do, guys. Blush, eyes, lips. And you will look amazing when you're 48. Chelsea, Fireblade, thank you for following. I'm, 30, I'm 35, the girl I'm talking to is 49. She continually insults my girlfriends who are all 22 and 28. Why are you, oh, 22 to 28. Um, so don't be in a relationship with somebody who is insulting of uh, the people who are uh, in your circle, but uh, it just, there's, I, I, I just kind of see red flags all over this to be honest. Um, brows, uh, I get that tattooing done, microblading, so that I just never have to touch them. 48, yes indeed. How can I improve communication in my relationship? Get fix that shit. Is that still isolation? Somebody who doesn't want you to spend time with your friends? Yes. Yes, 100%. Guy makes second date plans, cancel the day of, never reschedule. Can I call him out? No, like don't bother, right? This is why I say use the no kissing for three months dating rule and be open, keep meeting people just because you 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 were talking like you started talking to somebody and you scheduled a date and then you scheduled a second date where are the other people where are the other people that you're talking to why are you focusing on one person um why do you feel the need to call them out it doesn't matter people who 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 can't be bothered to show up people who can't be bothered to be consistent don't matter they are irrelevant you need to be open and dating multiple people at the same time so that if you have somebody like this, made second date plans, canceled the day of, never rescheduled, oh well, so what? I'm talking to that person and that person too. I'm waiting for the one who stands out. I don't need to call out the one who cancels a day of and doesn't reschedule. They are irrelevant. You are irrelevant. I don't care if you don't want to show up for me because I'm looking for the person who is showing up for me consistently. So I'm going to see multiple people, talk to multiple people simultaneously, let the best man win and don't get hung up on this person. You don't need to call him out. You need to let him fade. I want that so bad. What well, can be expensive? Oh, for the microblading. Yeah, it can be, but it's so worth it. Distant distracted. How do you get back in the dating scene after a long-term relationship? First, you grab no more assholes. 
Second, you promise yourself you're going to use a no kissing for three months dating rule. Third, you promise yourself you're going to read this book cover to cover and do everything that's inside that book. Tips for arguments with hubby about household chores. Yes, indeed. For 30 days, you're going to track everything. Everything and like everything that's paid for and who pays it, everything that's done and who does it. You're going to track this for 30 days. Leave nothing out. Then you're going to have a board meeting. You're going to go to your husband and you're going to say, baby, I, I, I've been tracking how things have been being paid for and things have been being done for the past 30 days. By the way, track it for 30 days. Don't just, just because you think, just because you think that there's an imbalance doesn't mean there is an imbalance. So you want to track this for 30 days and come at him with numbers, with facts, not feelings, not perceptions, facts. The fact is for the last 30 days, I've tracked everything that's being done, every responsibility, the financial responsibilities, the physical responsibilities. Here's what I found. I'm paying this percent of the financial responsibilities. I'm doing this percent of the physical responsibilities. There is an imbalance. You need to pick up this percent of the physical responsibilities. If you don't, you can choose to pay somebody to do your share of the physical responsibilities, or we can have me pay less into the financial responsibilities. And by the way, if you do pay less of the financial responsibilities, you now have more pockets, you now have more pocket money to pay somebody to help you with the physical responsibilities. But don't go to him with with feelings and perceptions go to him with numbers because he can't argue with numbers. If you leave anything off of that, by the way, if you don't note anything that he did, he can say you're wrong. You're wrong, I do this. He has a counter argument. So note everything. Boyfriend refuses to let me touch his phone even though he's been unfaithful to me on social media. Dump the motherfucker. Why are you staying with somebody who continues to be shady? Uh, my long distance relationship doesn't message me as much now. Tried to break up, but he won't let me go. My love, why are you talking about your life as though you have no control? You don't need permission from somebody to stop talking to them. Break it off. Block them. And, and be done. And be done. But you don't need permission to stop talking to somebody. Never talk about your life as though you have no control. I want to be engaged before I'm moving across the state and my boyfriend thinks we're committed enough to move. You, you have every right to ask for what you want. You have every right to have that standard. You have every right to say, I'm not up and leaving without a deeper commitment from somebody. This is not, um, like this, this is not something that's isolated to you. This is me. This is what I want. I'm not just up and moving because you want somebody to move with you. I am going to up and move when I do that with my husband. If you don't want to at least promise to be my husband, that's okay. I, you know, it's it's gonna stuck, suck to see you go, but uh, this is what I need. And if this is not something you want to give, that's okay. I'm not telling you what to do. You're free to do what you want, but I'm not just up and moving for a casual relationship. I need to at least be engaged first. How do you get the strength to stop engaging in arguments when being gaslighted? First, you dump the motherfucker. 
like I, I would not stay in a relationship with somebody who insists on lying to me and then insists on trying to make me feel crazy because I know they're lying to me. Goodbye. You don't have access to me. If you can't be a addition to my life, if you can't have integrity, if you can't be an honest person, I don't want you because you're not good for me. I can do better. So first, I dump them. Then I refuse to engage in conversations with them. It's that simple, my love. Don't be in a relationship with somebody who lacks integrity. Uh, sorry, guys, I see there's like, like, do I confront him? What should I do? Secondary questions. Um, I don't pay attention to who wrote what when I answer a question. If you guys want me to do a deeper dive into your situation, come get a coaching session. Um, you can book yourself by going into the link tree in my bio. You're going to see the second button in the link tree is a coaching button. Read what's on that page to book yourself in for a session. Make sure you follow the instructions on there. But uh, I can't go deeper into your situation without a coaching session because I do need to ask a bunch of questions to get a lot more details. When do you find it reasonable to go through your partner's phone? If you're suspicious of something, then go get the proof, right? Go get the proof. Uh, you know, sometimes you're not suspicious, but you're just curious. I'm okay with the curiosity check as well. But once you've done a curiosity check, don't continue to do curiosity checks. Once you've done your curiosity check, the dialogue in your head is, I know what I need to know. If you feel compelled to do that again, if there's no reason for you to keep checking in their phone, then say, I know what I need to know. What do you know? Did you pick a trustworthy partner? That's what you know. Did you pick somebody who loves you and is devoted to you? That's what you know. Did you pick somebody who has integrity and takes pride in their integrity? That's what you know. Uh, boyfriend keeps letting his admirer friend disrespect me and get in between our relationship. You're not his girlfriend. That's his girlfriend. That's his girlfriend and she's upset that he's got you around. Dump the motherfucker. You want to be with somebody who practices the three P's, protect, profess, provide. He's not protecting. This is not a man. This is a guy. Don't be in a relationship with a guy. My husband would never, never do that. Don't be in a relationship. She's not disrespecting. His admirer is not disrespecting. He's disrespecting because he's allowing, he's entertaining the disrespect. He has to go. Read no more assholes. No more guys, no more selfish short-term thinkers. Quit going for the bad boys. That's right. Go for men. Use that no kissing for three months dating rule. Guys will not. Guys will not stick around. Maliha, uh, don't forget to purchase your session, my love. This appointment will not stick if you don't pre-purchase your session. Just friends after a toxic relationship possible. This is a toxic person. Don't stay just friends. It's it's going to keep you from evolving. It's going to keep you from growing. It's going to keep you from moving on. Don't do it. You need a man, not a guy. 100%. Yes. So, Dao, you need a woman, not a girl. Or a man. Or a man. I forget. I forget. I forget which way you swing, my friend. But yeah, if, if the boys are what you like, you need a man, not a guy, if you want a long-term relationship. Ex-boyfriend doesn't want to commit to me again because he likes his freedom, but he still wants and loves me. Oh, he still likes, 
He still likes the bedroom time. He still likes the bedroom time. Stop giving him the bedroom time. No kissing, no sleepovers, no sex. Let's see how long he sticks around for. Let's see how long he continues to love you for if you're not convenient anymore. How long will he love you for if you were not convenient anymore? How long do you think that's gonna last for? He thinks titles are stupid. It's been two years. When is it reasonable to leave? You can leave today. If you want a relationship, I want you to profess that we are in a relationship, but you don't want to say that we're in a relationship. We have a mismatch of fundamental values. I want to be with somebody who makes it obvious that we are in a relationship. You don't want to make it obvious that we are in a relationship. This is a mismatch for me. I don't want to be in a relationship with somebody who professes they are not in a relationship with me. Guys, uh, if you want me to fix a fight for you, uh, right? If there's if there's like a, a, a fight going on about something in your relationship, you want me to help you uh, understand it and deal with it, uh, I do need to unpack, right? Um, so do get a coaching session if what you're messaging me about is a spat that's going on in your relationship. I hate online dating. What do I do? Uh, don't be afraid to approach people when you see somebody somewhere that looks interesting to you. Don't be afraid to approach them and start a conversation and let them know that you'd like to get together. I met a really great guy online, but he's from a different country. Should I take it seriously? No. No. Um, no, because who knows how much time you're going to waste being attached to somebody who who isn't even able to come and see you um, or isn't moving into your country anytime soon. Um, you probably want to date somebody who can take you to dinner. That's not the case here. So I wouldn't attach myself to this. Boyfriend interacts with lots of girl friends, but won't let me go through his phone and calls me controlling. Dump the motherfucker. This is a resounding dump the motherfucker. Uh, absolutely, this is a guy. This is not a man. And if you stay in this relationship, just know that you are setting yourself up for heartbreak. So you are responsible for the emotional roller coaster you will go through if you stay in this relationship. So just know you can't blame anybody but yourself for the unhappiness you experience about these girls, about his interactions with them, about the conversations he has, about the shadiness he has around them, about the fact that he uses them as ego strokes. So this is your responsibility. Um, if you stay in this relationship, you are responsible for the emotions you will experience that will be negative. You look gorgeous, thank you. Dump the motherfucker, big time. Uh, hold on a second, guys. I gotta send in the email. Send in the email. Send in the email. Send in the email. The motherfucker, big time. Send in the email. will never do. You don't have to do long distance relationships. Some people end up in them. Sometimes they work out. Okay. So, what if you wanna wait till they approach you and not you approach them because you don't want it to be awkward? Then you are reducing your chances significantly. So just know 
that um, your chances are greatly reduced um, because you are reducing opportunity. So if you want more opportunity, don't just choose from the people who are choosing you. Choose people. Let them know you're available and you'd like to see them and see if they pick up uh, the chase. Sorry guys. Sorry, loves. We never chase a woman, we chase our purpose. Should. Ah, I find the keyboard typing satisfying. Cute. Cute. Men used to chase when it was worth it. New generations are not. Oh, such a big vomit. What's the, what's the matter, honey? Why are you vomiting on my page? It's really not necessary. Right? Really not necessary. You can't, you can't say like a generation of people are off and unworthy. That's simply not true. Simply not true. Simply not true. Maniha. Amore. Yeah. How to deal with people taking advantage of your, no. Uh, so bedroom stuff I only do uh, on one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions. I don't talk about those on lives. Ooh, my mom wants to get back with my dad and has cheated on her throughout their 20 years. Well, that doesn't sound like a good idea, mom. Does not sound like a good idea. Uh, some guys are worth it. You're just searching for the wrong, right? Uh, men, men are worth it. Men are very worth it. How much are coaching sessions? It depends on what you choose. Uh, if you are interested in coaching, do go to the link to my bio and click that coaching button. Uh, and then you can see what suits you most, what you feel is a good fit for you. What does a slow burn feel like? Oh, it's like you just, it feels like, like you're, you're just like increasing, like you're like, you like them more and more and more. You appreciate them more and more and more. And then one day it's like, bam, it all hits. It all hits. That last little piece fits. Um, for me, the last little piece was confidence. Confidence is so sexy. Um, and so the day I realized how confident he was on top of everything else I already knew about him was the day my brain exploded. Uh, last time I made out with my husband was supper time. When do you think about cheating partners? Should you ever give them a second chance? So it depends. 
Not if they're serial cheaters, by the way. Like, a one-off, maybe. But cheating, like a cheater, not somebody who cheated, right? Ch somebody who cheated, that's a one-off. A cheater is a serial cheater. Serial cheaters, no. Um, because that's the behavior they choose, right? It wasn't a mistake. It was choice after choice after choice after choice. So, no. Some things to do to bring the spark back in a relationship. Get your kisses in. Two kisses a day, minimum five seconds each. Every single day. Get those kisses in. Get in the kisses. How to get a guy's attention in a healthy way. So you mean like in like you're in a bar or something and you want to get his attention or you're in a coffee shop? Just go up. Just go up. You reach out. You touch him, right? Break that bubble. Break that little invisible bubble that we all have around each other. Touch him. Say something that's going to make him smile. Make him laugh. Uh, and then and then go. I don't have to. I, I wish I could stay, but I can't. Uh, do you want to get together? Like, let me give you my email address or my Snapchat or, you know, whatever. We offer more to the table. Oh, guys, we got one of those. Of course we are worth it. We offer more to the table. Oh, sweetie. Sweetie, push a baby out. Do it. Grow a human being inside your body. Do it. I dare you. I want to see you do that because I want to see you bring more to this world. You offer more show us grow a human being inside your body show us how much you offer the guys the prize guys are not a prize guys are fun to play with by the way uh guys are fun to play with if you just want here today gone tomorrow absolutely play with guys um the trophy though I want my guy to be a man, then you have to let go of the guy to get a man. You you can't, we don't get into relationships to change people. If you made the mistake of getting in a relationship with the wrong person, if you made the mistake of getting in a relationship with a selfish short-term thinker and not a generous long-term thinker, that's a mistake you need to rectify. But don't get in a relationship with a selfish short-term thinker and want him to be a generous long-term thinker. It's like, you know, you, you picked up a dog and you want them to be a cat. Be a cat. Be a cat. No, they're a dog. So you really have to be conscious of your choice of partner for a relationship. Are you available for one-on-one? -on -one? Yes, I am. Uh, anybody who wants to get a coaching session, you can get that through the link tree in my bio. Doesn't take a smart lady to push a baby out. Doesn't take a smart guy to put a seed in her belly. But you can't make one. You can't make one. We can live without you. We can take our bone marrow and, and fertilize our own eggs. We literally can live without you. Without us, your species dies. But we can literally continue living without you. So, yeah, don't come here and, and, and argue what gender has more value. It's not going to work. If you're afraid to leave a bad relationship, come get coaching. I can't, I can't help you fix that on a live. But um, if you need the motivation to leave a bad relationship, to leave behind a guy, a selfish short-term thinker. Uh, don't let fear get in your way. Come book a coaching session. boring 
My ex is insecure and has trust issues due to past exes of hers. I've never broken her trust. Any tips? That's your ex, my love. That's your ex. Uh, so um, don't be so attached to an ex, for one thing. You can't fix them. You can't be her therapist. She has to be the one who wants to do the work. So if she wants to overcome her insecurities and be able to trust a trustworthy person when she gets into a relationship with them, she can come take my No More Insecurity program. What do you think of men that always flirt with other women only? That's not men, that's guys. Guys who need ego strokes in order to elevate their confidence and self-esteem. I like the earrings too. They're so cool. So cool. Thank you, my love. Just started reading Comeback Queen. Awesome. How you feeling? Is it helping? How is it going? I went on a date with a guy two days ago and he really hasn't texted me back afterwards. So who else are you seeing? Who else are you talking to? Don't get hung up on one person. Your options should be open right now. You should be reading No More Assholes. You should be dating more than one person at a time. So that you're not so disappointed when one person doesn't follow through. There's a lot of people out there. Keep talking, keep talking simultaneously layer right because here's the thing you can be talking at three people at once somebody's gonna fall off at the second date that's okay i'm talking to people i'm you know you are irrelevant if you don't want to be in my life you are irrelevant if you are inconsistent you are irrelevant if you don't show up you are irrelevant if you're not interested enough in me you are irrelevant keep talking to people until you find the one and and don't be so focused on just one person as soon as you start talking to one person you're not talking to other people that's bullshit you're wasting time you're wasting time somebody might come in while you're on date five with this person but date six or date seven you see all these red flags out they go meanwhile this person moves up to date three but they might fall off at date three that's okay here comes you know the next one so Keep talking to people, layer, layer these people, not just one after another after another, layer them so that it doesn't matter if somebody is inconsistent. Stop chasing after people who aren't actively showing up for you. Stop caring about people who don't actively show up for you. I have an insecure attachment problem due to how I was raised. How do I address this? Come get coaching. Uh, come get coaching, my love. Can't fix you on a live. This is the kind of stuff that needs a deeper dive uh, into your history and who you are and how this is showing up in your behaviors. And we can talk about the behaviors that you need to start doing in order to turn this around. And always by the end of my sessions, I give you homework. So you come to me, we have a conversation about what it is that's getting in your way. I help you better understand what's getting in your way. And I give you tools to navigate out of it. Sarah followed the host. Thank you. Do you see yourself speaking with your mom again? Not, not at this point. No, um, you know, it's, it's just, it's not worth it. It's not worth it. It's not worth my mental health. Uh, my husband talks to her and maintains that contact and has, you know, conversations with her, uh, <laughs> you know, and, and that's, that's good you know that he's he's a bridge basically right there's it's not like zero contact because he'll call her a few times a year she'll ask how i'm doing he'll he'll give her you know the broad outline basically uh he'll tell me how she's doing 
And that's good enough for us, right? That's good enough for us. But me reaching out to my mom just to tell me how she's happening, uh, I don't see that happening. Her reaching out to me, I don't see that happening. I literally, I, I can't see her um, coming to a place where she feels like she wants to reach out to me. For all my adult years, all my adult years, my mom didn't call me. I was always the one to call my mom. I was always the one to make arrangements to go see her. And and then she would give me shit for not calling her more. And I'm like, mom, you can call me too. But it was always up to me. And so I'm just, I'm tired of of, of doing that. I'm, I'm, you know, just, for me, if she wants to rekindle a relationship, we need to do the Dr. Phil show. Uh, I did write into them. Um, I wrote into them. They wrote back and said they would be interested in pursuing a show with us. Um, but my mom refused. Uh, my husband talked to her for a long time, over an hour. The producer of the show talked to her. She said no. So it, if she wants to rekindle a relationship, for me, it has to start with the Dr. Phil show because I know that they're going to send her somewhere where they're going to do the testing, the biological testing, the physiological testing, um, the MRI scans, and, you know, the psychological testing. So basically both aspects, right? Um, so she's willing to do that. I'm willing to start, but if not, not for me. Reciprocity is a secret to love. Love is a verb. Absolutely. Love is a verb. Love is understanding your partner and understanding, um, what are the actions that make them feel loved and doing them. Uh, confused if a dude I'm dating is a provider. He picks me up for dates and drives, but splits a tab 50-50. Not a provider, right? Not a provider. A provider is somebody who is uncomfortable with the notion of being provided for. Uh, so he always goes above and beyond to provide for those that he cares for. He's, he's not showing this out of the gate. Uh, he's showing some chivalry, but he's not showing a strong provider, you know, generosity, right? Would you say love is, a, is an emotion? It's a chemical reaction. Uh, how would you describe what love is? So the, 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 the feeling that you have is oxytocin, right? It's that chemical reaction. Um, Love mostly is a verb. So think of when we lived in the jungle. I love you, so I help your survival. I love you, so I'm close to you. I love you, so I'm part of your affection, part of your grooming, right? Uh, think monkeys. Monkeys groom each other because they care for each other. That physical touch, that hugging, that holding, that's all part of love. But the sensation that's created when you hug and hold and bond is oxytocin. So you know, know that this is a, a biological body, right? And so there are drives and impulses that do bring us together and bond us together and keep us together. Those kisses that you do every single day, minimum five seconds each, minimum two kisses a day, the chemicals in that kiss are an aphrodisiac, an antidepressant, an amphetamine. So they, they make you feel good. There's, there's an association to that person. You make me feel good. So doing these daily acts of affection, of bonding really solidifies the sensation of love in your relationship because you feel bonded, like extra bonded to that person. Uh, and then also the, the physical things that you do for them makes you feel extra bonded because you, if you were early homo sapien living in the jungle, picking food and sharing that with somebody, the reason why you share is because you want them to survive. So sharing, doing things for another person is a loving act. I love you, I wanna keep you. Um, so that's how I define love. How do you choose which of your dates you're going to pick and when? So the one who plans, right? Like, you know, it, listen, first come, first serve. If, if you're making a date with me for Thursday, you get it, right? You get it. If, if number two or number three wants a date for Thursday, I'm sorry, I'm busy Thursday, but what about Friday? 
Is it too soon to say I love you after four months? I would wait at least six. The first three months, you're on what I call best behavior syndrome. You're not quite yourself. In other words, in the first three months, you're sleeping less, but you're not tired. So you're not grumpy, right? Like women, we don't show that PMS grumpiness. Um, we don't even feel it so much because we're on a chemical high that really puts us into that best behavior syndrome. So we are in a better mood, generally speaking. But after three months, those chemicals tend to die off. And if you're grumpy in the morning, that comes back. If you're grumpy when you're PMSing, when you're hormonal, that comes back. Um, if you're grumpy when you're stressed, that comes back. So wait at least three months after the first three months. So after that honeymoon period, have another three months that go by where you're settling into the reality phase, really getting a better idea of who that person is. So I love you before six months. You don't, I don't think you know the person well enough yet. Uh, her free TikTok info and books I've bought helps so much. I can't imagine how helpful the session is. It's very helpful. When we get targeted into your situation and your details, very helpful. Are women really supposed to be splitting the tabs? I want you to look for somebody who's like, no, no, I got it. Who's generous, right? Who who shows you that they are a generous long-term thinker. Um, you want the generosity because generosity really tends to create, you know, like if you're coming at this the right way, right? Pick yourself a generous person that you like and appreciate, makes you laugh more than anybody else, right? And, and reciprocate, like my husband is so good to me, I work hard to be good to him because he's so good to me. I love that dynamic where you're both working so hard to make the other person happy. Keep your body count low, you can never turn back, wrong. Do what you want, do you, do you. Do as many people as you want, have all the fun that you want lose track of your body count if you want to do that do what you want to do when you want to do it with who you want to do it with there's nothing wrong with body count absolutely no there's nothing wrong with body count absolutely nothing wrong with body count absolutely nothing wrong if you want to explore explore have no regrets, don't do anything you're gonna regret. Always be safe, always be with trustworthy people. Don't put yourself in situations you're gonna regret. Have zero regrets, but have the fun you wanna have. And never, never let somebody tell you, oh, if you have a high body count, you're less of a person. That's bullshit, that's absolute bullshit. And that is their insecurity vomiting yourself into your present. And those people have to go, those people have to go. Do you book one-on-one -on -one virtual sessions? Yes, all of my sessions are on Zoom. Uh, so I do sessions with people from around the world. Actually, this weekend I did a session with somebody in Australia. My date gave me a hickey without asking first and I found it disrespectful. Yeah, dump him. That is super disrespectful. He was trying to mark his territory. Uh, don't know why you didn't push him off immediately, by the way. I don't know why you didn't push him off immediately. Uh, that is on you. You are responsible for your environment and when somebody starts doing something you don't like, you are responsible for removing them from you with your words, with your hands, push them off, whatever you need to do, leave the environment, whatever you need to do. But when somebody starts disrespecting you, immediately address it. Do not let it progress. Do not let it happen. When they start, whoa, 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 what are you doing? Like put a stop to it, be forceful, be firm, and take responsibility for your environment and never let people disrespect you.
Do you think temptations with others is okay even when in a relationship, not acting on it? Thoughts are going to happen. Thoughts are fine. Crossing the line is when it becomes a behavior. Love is a verb. I said that today again. What if you choose to divorce but can't afford to move out? It's difficult. Then you get a job and you rent a room instead of renting an apartment. But you you make it happen. There are women with five kids, five kids, no education, no job, who've left abusive husbands. You can do it. Don't tell yourself you can't because you're trying to achieve some kind of lifestyle. Scale down your lifestyle and leave the abusive relationship. Can you come back from bringing up insecurities almost monthly for two years? Yes, if you stop. So if you've been doing it for two years, if you stop for a year, they will fully believe that you will not do this. Uh, so whatever, you know, whatever it is that you're trying to undo in someone's mind, if you want them to think that this is no longer happening, to feel this is no longer happening, the approximate math for that happening is take the time the conflict has gone on for, divide it in half, and that's about how long it's going to take for this to be undone if you are consistent with the healthy behavior. What are your thoughts on social media boundaries while dating someone and what should they be? I don't want to be in a relationship with somebody who seeks the attention of other women. So I don't want to be in a relationship with somebody who's liking, commenting, DMing other girls on, on social media. Like friends, established friends, fine. But you're making new friends after you and I are going out? Why? Like, like why are you, why are you like picking up new friends online? Uh, I can understand going to a party, going somewhere and meeting new people and like having conversations and going, yeah, you're cool. Um, you know, that's totally fine. But if you're online picking up new friends all over the place, that's shady. And so that for me is a no. Um, if you're hitting up Instagram models, liking, commenting on their stuff, no, that's a no. That's a no. You can you can go look at their stuff, but be anonymous. So if you're seeking their attention, if you want them to know that you're there, that's a no. Guys, who wants a notification when I go live? Say, I do. Notification when I go live. Go live. Say, What about giving his number to females he meets in person as friends? If it's friend, like if it's friend, right? Like if you don't suspect it's anything more than friendship, right? Like because they had interesting conversations about uh, things that they actually share in common. Like they like to play the same video games or something. I don't know, um, you know, but like if it's, you know, making connections as friends, that's fine. Um, but if you're running around social media, picking up new friends, it's not based on a conversation that you had, it's based on how they look. So why? Do you believe in women staying with a cheater? What would your advice be to her? So like somebody who did a one off, um, maybe that can be fixed. If they are a sealed cheater, she needs to go. I love your state of mind, you inspire me so much. Thank you. Got a spinal cord injury last year. Any advice for dating again as a young guy not paralyzed from the waist down? Uh, just 
get out there, get out there, get your dating profiles up and, you know, obviously include your wheelchair in it, right? Because you want to be upfront about who you are and what your life entails. But there are people who have no problem with that. Um, there are also dating sites for people who have injuries, who are in wheelchairs. So there are resources for you for sure, for sure. Do you talk to your dad? Yes. Yeah. Where do you share your pricing info for your sessions? Go to my bio, click on the link tree. There's a coaching button in there. My girl gets jealous about me having females on social media, but has tons of guys on hers. Um, so, like, I have a discussion between the two of you about what the limits are for having people on social media, um, right? Like, it, it, is it about a follower account? Like, why do you need a high follower account? Can you, can you bring your followers down to the people that you actually know and interact with, right? I do, okay, my I do's, those of you who want a notification when I go live, click my picture up here once or twice, you're gonna get a pop-up and the pop-up is a bell right about down here somewhere. Uh, click the bell when you do that, say I just did. I got some already do's. What to do with an ex's clothes? Should I return them? No, just bag them up, put them outside and say, hey, your clothes are here, come get them. And that's it. here outside come get them just and that's it clothes are here outside come get them love it welcome have you decided when the long distance book is coming out can't wait for it so i did a free guide uh those of you who are in a long distance relationship go get your free guide in the link tree in my bio Found out my boyfriend has a girlfriend. Should I tell her? 100% yes. Uh, he is putting both of your physical health at risk and who knows who else. So now that you know, stop, by the way, ex-boyfriend. I don't know why you didn't say ex because he should be an ex by now. Um, but he's putting both of your physical health at risk. And he, if he's got you know a secret here and a secret there, who else is a secret? Who knows? Who knows how many more there are? So uh, definitely let her know. What are some of your advice to young women? If they wanna have fun, go have fun. If they wanna commit to a long-term relationship, use a no kissing for three months dating rule and make sure that they understand the 12 character traits that their partners should be having. Uh, should I cook for him only when we are in an official relationship? Uh, depends. Is he taking you out for meals? Is he being good to you? Like, is he treating you? Uh, always be reciprocal, right? If he's being good to you, if he's paying when he takes you out, make him meals. Like, I really love letting a man pay for me. Uh, men want to pay more than 50% of the time. Uh, it, 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 just, it just kind of fires something up inside of them, that provider instinct, right? They have a strong provider instinct, and so I, I don't override that. I let them have that strong provider instinct, but I make sure I reciprocate. I don't let him you know, do so much more for me that he feels he's not getting enough back in return. So uh, let them be the man they want to be, but always make sure you are equaling their effort. I love your delivery. Thank you. 
How do I know if I'm falling out of love or just nervous about the commitment? Um, make sure you're with a generous long-term thinker. Uh, ask yourself, do they make me laugh more than anybody else? Do they pass a 12 character traits and no more assholes, getting at least a nine out of 12? Are they loyal and hardworking? Uh, do they practice the three Ps, protect, profess, provide? Are you maybe depressed and need to uh, up your serotonin levels and come out of depression? Advice for dating after divorce from a cheater, make sure you read No More Assholes and use that no kissing for three months dating rule so that you don't get into a relationship with somebody like that again by accident. So the 12 character traits are in No More Assholes. Do you think long distance relationships are worth it? I don't know. It's It all depends on the people, right? boyfriend is always caught up with his work so if that's a problem with you don't be with somebody who is ambitious and hard working no kissing rule from someone you took a short break from if they need to change make sure the change is evident before you take them back so the no kissing for three months dating rule is going to give you time and space to make sure they have changed no kissing no sex no sleepovers Monogamy is overrated. Well, it's not natural for our, our species. Um, it is cultural more than anything. But I like my monogamy. You know, like, listen, I understand how we're built, but I understand we have choices. I am with somebody who chooses monogamy. I myself choose monogamy. We enjoy our simple monogamous relationship. I did tell him in the beginning of the relationship that I am bisexual and he would be my only man, but I may have a girlfriend at any given time. Uh, I am no longer in the mood to have a girlfriend, so it's just him. So at this time in my life, I am not bisexual because I have no desire to pursue or have a relationship with a woman. Uh, so it's just my husband and I'm happy that way. So know that sexuality is fluid. Just because you are one particular way at one point in your life doesn't mean that can't change. And if it does change, that's okay. You can go with your flow. We are very dynamic beings. What are things we can do in return for men when they pay for us? Uh, look for what they need. Like, like, and we're good at this, right? Because women are really good at seeing fine detail. So look for what they need. Hello, my love. Uh, look for what they need. Um, so, you know, listen, does he need a new shirt? Uh, does he need clothes that fit him better? Does he need healthier food? Does he need to have his car cleaned on the inside? Uh, what's his love language? Does, like, what does he appreciate? Does he appreciate quality time? Does he appreciate physical affection? Does he appreciate acts of service? Know what his love language is. Even if you're not in a relationship yet, if you're just going through the courtship phase and they're taking good care of you and you're appreciating that, then reciprocate it and do that love language quiz, guys. Listen, when you're dating, when you're looking for the person you're going to commit to and you're dating all these people, using that no kissing for three months dating rule, be smart people. But do a love language quiz for everybody you start gaining interest in. Know how your love languages are going to align. Understand them as early as possible. Guy I'm talking to knew we were gonna see each other today, but he got busy, this isn't the first. So who else are you talking to? Why are you just focused on one person? Why are you letting someone that you don't even know well enough yet, like, be a disappointment? It should be like, oh, well. Oh, well. We no more assholes, my love. Hello, Michelle. Michelle's a good wife. Love languages is so important. Always do the love language quiz. Yes, my loves. Always, always. 
Is it wrong to tell them my love language is gifts? Don't just tell them, do a quiz with them. Simultaneously, at the same time, exchange your results, um, right? Because you saying, uh, hey, my love language is gifts, right? It's, it's, it sounds like you're in this for what you can get. What is their love language? Like understanding love languages needs to be an exchange of information, not just you delivering how you're gonna feel loved without understanding how they're gonna feel loved as well. Give me a second, guys. I can get your book on Amazon. Yes, you guys, you can get my books on Amazon or anywhere you buy books online. If you want an audiobook, Fix That Shit is now an audiobook, but you can only get it through the link tree in my bio. You won't find it on Audible because Audible wants 70% commission. And I'm like, no, I think I'll do it myself. I think I will do it myself. Does anybody want a book walkthrough? Look at all these look at all my babies so i wrote nine books now i'm waiting for number nine i ordered it i ordered a copy of the perfect play so i'm waiting for it uh so yeah so i am waiting for book number nine to be delivered which book is the love languages in so there's a book called the five love languages um, if you, uh, I think there's a button in the link to my bio that will lead you to where you can purchase the five love language book. You can take the five love language quiz. Aw, this is so sweet. My boyfriend has been so much more loving since I've been doing this stuff and fix that shit. You have a generous long-term thinker who loves you. That's so perfect, my love. Good, congratulations. What is your opinion on partners doing this when y'all were broken up but got back together? Uh, like knowledge is power. So the more information you get on each other, the better you'll be able to have a good relationship. If you guys broke up and got back together, make sure you get into fix that shit and do what's in there. What if he says he can't be as affectionate as me? Listen to the words coming out of his mouth and ask yourself, is this what I want? If you want somebody who is more affectionate, pay attention. He just said, that's not me. I will not be more affectionate. So if, if that's okay with you, then you stay in this relationship. If you want somebody who's more affectionate, you leave this relationship and get in a relationship with somebody who's more affectionate. But make sure before you get into your next relationship, you do that love language quiz before you kiss. <clears throat> so my girlfriend wants a ring and wants to get married i want to but i want to buy a home first with her so here's what you do um say okay absolutely like we can do both um listen you you can't tell the difference between a, a, a real diamond and something that looks like a diamond so can we get a ring in the style that you like, but not with a real diamond? Because real diamonds are honestly overpriced, overpriced. Uh, it's a marketing ploy. It's, it's literally dirt compressed that makes it shiny, but there's other things that you can create that have an equal amount of shine. In fact, moissanite is even more sparkly than diamonds and it's significantly less. So say to her, let's do this baby like let's do this but i want to put the money into the house let's get you that ring let's get married at city hall let's make it an inexpensive wedding but yeah let's get you that ring but an inexpensive ring like budget no more than two thousand dollars um wedding no more than two thousand dollars let's do it at city hall like we'll dress up nice 
but we'll do it at City Hall so that we can get married and let's put the money in the house. So come back to her with that negotiation. At, let's do what you want and do what I want, but let's put the money in the house. I love fix that shit. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. You guys want a book walkthrough? He's acts of service. Oh, this is so sweet. Whenever my boyfriend can tell something is bothering me, he does things around the house to lessen my stress. Uh, so we are doing a book walkthrough now, you guys. Diamonds are useless. No, but for real, though. I'm single, 19. How do I put myself out there and go with things? I have a book for you, my friend. It's uh, called The Perfect Play. You can find a link to that uh, to Amazon, like to the book on Amazon in the link tree in my bio. So uh, go ahead and click that link and go get yourself a copy of The Perfect Play because I teach you how to get out there and date. Ooh, white sapphire is also cheap and beautiful. Most people can't tell the difference from a diamond. Exactly. Exactly. Cubic zirconia, white sapphires, moissanite. No one would no one would know. It's not a diamond. No one would know. Okay. <clears throat> I love my husband more than when I married him. Yes, Michelle, right? We're going to Vegas to renew when COVID is over. That's super sweet. Why are you live every 17 minutes? because I love you what's a good book I can get my friend who struggles with her own insecurities uh, is she single I would say no more assholes um, because it does teach you how to elevate yourself and increase your confidence okay book walk through uh, so come back Queen this is the book that helps you get over a breakup and put your heart back together. Uh, even if you broke up a year ago, if you're still hurting over that last relationship, Come Back Queen is going to help you through that and, and really mend. Uh, no More Assholes is the next one. This is the one that's going to help you make sure your next relationship is the right one. Not toxic, not abusive. You're going to use that no kissing for three months dating rule. Uh, After the First Kiss is a book that you read once you find that generous long-term thinker and commit. This gets you from the courtship phase into the reality phase with less insecurity because you transition with understanding. Things do change, so when you understand what changes and how to get through the changes, how to deal with the in-laws, how to deal with baby mama, how to deal with their kids, um, how to deal with them going back to work. so. This is that this book here really good for helping you transition into a relationship. Hello from Australia. Uh, fix that shit is going to help you unpack your baggage in a relationship. So the baggage that you brought with you because of your conditioning, your parents, your exes, uh, the vomiting that you're doing, the insecurity, the stress, the fear that is swimming around inside of you. I help you deal and reduce that. Uh, I help you communicate better in your relationship, understand your partner better. So boring. Um, custom made goes really well with fix that shit. Uh, if you are codependent, if you are wanting your partner to uh, always, um, you know, spend every single last minute of their time with you, then it's not healthy. You are over focused on your partner. You're not focused enough on yourself and your evolution, uh, your own growth, your purpose, what it is that you can give to the world. I literally want you to get paid doing what you love, but if you don't know what you love yet, then you need to dive into this. Your partner shouldn't be your purpose. Your purpose should be your purpose. So I teach you to understand what your purpose is and how to monetize it so that you start getting paid doing what you love. So this is a really good book if you don't know what your purpose is yet. Uh, Dating 101 for parents or nerds. This is understand the drives, behaviors, and emotions behind love. There is no swearing in this book. So if you just want to uh, see the book that I wrote that should be in every high school for sex ed, 
dating 101 is the one i want our young people to not need no more assholes and fix that shit one day uh say yes to goodness this is how to live basically all these other books are how to relationship this one is how to live 10 areas of your life that affect you and how to navigate them so that you are happier in general fake love need not apply this is a free book you will get this through the link tree in my bio um so this is how to avoid posers losers scammers and predators and then the last book that i wrote is the book for men it's called the perfect play you can hit that first button in the link to my bio. Uh, it teaches men how to date so that they end up with a generous long-term thinker, not a selfish short-term thinker. So no more getting used. How do you deal with foul language and hurtful words between a husband and you? Um, stop fighting, right? Remove the conflict. The foul language is a symptom of the conflict in your relationship unless you are with an asshole. Um, so if it's a symptom of the conflict, then remove the conflict. So get into fix that shit or come get coaching, but stop the fighting altogether. Do you receive full profit if we order on Amazon? No, they do, um, like there's a cost of printing for them. So they do uh, take off the cost of printing and uh, yeah. So there are there are deductions from that, from what you pay, but uh, it's, it's still worth it. It's worth it for me if you buy a book off Amazon. How do you break patterns of fighting? How to reset after arguments? All in fix that shit. Uh, so if you want to stop fighting, um, like stop fighting. My husband and I fought for 10 years. We haven't had a fight in five years, you guys. So if you wanna stop the fighting in your relationship, if you're with a generous long-term thinker who loves you and you do what is in fix that shit, it will work magic on your relationship. He left and will not talk to your girls. It's been a week. What should you do? Um, I mean, this, this sounds like something you need to talk to a lawyer about more than anything. How do you stop being a saver? Do you mean how do you stop picking up wounded birds? Uh, you read No More Assholes. Use that no kissing for three months dating rule. And stop. Stop kissing people who need therapy, who were looking for their partner to be their therapist. How long to wait for a proposal? Going on four years with no solid progress, something I really want. Did you come into this with the understanding that a marriage was going to happen? Did you have a discussion about timelines before you kissed and got into this relationship? Are you now realizing this is a conversation you should have had before you got into the relationship? Is have you have you brought this up at all? Are they giving you a reason for there not being a proposal yet? Is there conflict in the relationship? Nobody wants to marry conflict. So if you have to remove the conflict uh, in order for them to be more comfortable with getting engaged uh that might be some work that you want to do either through coaching or uh or diving into fix that shit to create a relationship that is um conflict free somebody just got fix that shit So you talked about it well beforehand. So then if you guys talked about a timeline, then go to him and say, you know, like we talked about this before and now that timeline is approaching and I'd like to know, um, you know, what's happening. Uh, how do we schedule a coaching session? Uh, so go to my bio, click on the link tree. There's a coaching button. You have to follow the three steps to book yourself in for a session. If you book a session, 
without following the three steps, I'm just going to delete the appointment. You really do have to follow the three steps to book yourself in. We've been on and off for the four years. He's been in and out. I'll check out your book. Yeah, make sure he's a generous long-term thinker too. Um, because trying to do what's and fix that shit with a selfish short-term thinker isn't going to work. Do you think it's automatically bad if you are absent from their social media? If they're not big posters, I'd say no. If they post everything but you, then I'd say yes. Would custom, uh, would custom aid help someone who's battling depression? Um, in, in a way, yes, because the tips that I have you do in here are things that actually help calm uh, fear and anxiety. Um, so that can be beneficial. Also, if you're depressed because you don't know what your purpose is and you figure out your purpose and it fires you up, yes, that battles depression. Can you get an audiobook for Fix That Shit? Yeah, you gotta get it through the link tree in my bio. Uh, it's not on Audible, you can only access it through the link tree in my bio. How to stop missing people that are bad for you. Um, distract yourself with your future, with your goals, with your plans, with things that are better than what you left behind. <clears throat> if I purpose, if I purchase fix that shit, does my partner have to read it? No, my husband has never read any of my books. He's never read fix that shit. We haven't had a fight in five years. If you become the emotional leader and you're with a generous long-term thinker who loves you, they change as a result of your changes. What's your view on a man who is keen on a... What's your view on a man who term thinker? What's your view on a man who is keen on a What's your view on a man? Um, that was my first. So, you know, I, I didn't have a problem with that. I don't have a problem people who want to do 50-50. I am now in a relationship with somebody who is more generous than my first husband. And I like this because it kind of gets me scrambling to be equally good to him. And I like that feeling where we are so good to each other. So um, if you're okay with that and that's what he wants and the two of you are great together, then by all means. But it's completely up to you. It's, it's fine by me if it's fine by you. I finally finished my 50 affirmations. Meditation helps so much. Your 50 I am's. I love that. Good, good, good. Jules. I love it. That's so good. Done. I'm purchasing. Love it. You guys are cute. You guys are cute. Thank you. What is this? Guys, who wants a notification when I go live? Say, I do. Also, don't forget, follow me on Instagram because I'm doing the next coaching giveaway soon. So soon. What is the most important conversation to have if you're thinking of tying the knot? Um, the most important conversation to have. I mean, if you're thinking of getting married, you should have already had all the important conversations. I do, I see my I do's. Okay, my loves, uh, those of you who want a notification when I go live, 
click my picture up here once or twice you're going to get a pop-up and the pop-up is a bell click on the bell when you do that say i just did i just did dating older men nothing wrong with that what to do when a guy starts talking to you chatting respectful but doesn't ask you out right away uh it doesn't matter right like like it doesn't matter you it's he's he's one of the people that you're talking to and if he's not one of the people that you're talking to you're doing something wrong you should you should not just be isolating one person at a time so you're talking with him fine um that's totally fine by the way if you want to do something with him you can propose that you don't have to wait for him to propose it um but if he doesn't end up going out with you that's okay because there's other people and you're talking to them and you're you're letting people show up as they choose to show up Miss Licky Dogs. Hmm. You're welcome. Oh, my assistant. Uh, make up. How about we make all this? Yes. She's so excited about doing my audiobook. So, No More Assholes is going to be out in audiobook by June. What do you suggest for long distance couples whose love language is physical touch? Uh, do grab the long distance guide, the free guide that's in the link tree in my bio. Advice on dating older men with children? this is a tricky one my love because this requires sacrifice and you must not operate from ego uh know that you come after work you always come after work we all come after work everybody needs to put work first so you always come after work so work and then you come after the kids if there's two you come after two kids you come after baby mama because a good man will make sure baby mama's happy because that makes the kids happy so your position is going to be number five if there's two kids it'll be number four if there's one kid um <clears throat> know that it's a long game it's a waiting game until the kids are adults and then baby mama falls off the picture now you're number two because the kids are adulting they're doing their thing always come after work and then it's you and then in retirement there you are number one um but you you can't operate from ego you you need to have grace so that they can do their work and do their parenting and keep the peace and there you are the safe place and just you know waiting until these things are out of the picture if you hit on me i will block you oh which of your books is best to read for a couple with opposing financial values? See, finances needs to be a fundamental value that aligns, right? Um, I would suggest a coaching session over a book, but if you want to go for a book, I would say fix that shit. But, uh, you know, when you say opposing financial values, I'm like, ooh, somebody who overspends and somebody who likes to save. How are you going to build a life with that person? um this is this is tricky territory that you've gotten yourself into i just did Ma oh somebody just got fixed that shit in the audiobook somebody just got the audiobook love it Ah, 
Maliha, Maliha, good girl. What is your advice for someone who is insecure and takes it out on their partner? Come take my No More Insecurity program. Um, so basically what we do with this program is, like basically what's happening is you're having thoughts that are creating emotions that are driving you to do behaviors. So we need to change how you think so we can change how you feel so we can change the behaviors that you feel compelled to do. The vomiting that you're doing into your relationship. Um, so if this is something you really want to work on, it is a process. The beauty of the No More Insecurity program is that the process is tied into your particular circumstance. So what are your triggers? We work with that, we undo them, we get you through them, we give you the tools to navigate them whenever they come up. What, what is your advice for some, yes. My ex said he cheated on me because I brought my coworker food. I'm glad that's your ex, that's my thought. I'm glad that's your ex, good job. Boyfriend hates me posting bikini pics. He sounds insecure. I would not be with an insecure person. The ideal partner is confident. The ideal relationship has freedom. A good partner who is confident doesn't try to parent you. You know what a parent says? Are you gonna wear that? You shouldn't post pictures like that. That's what a parent does. Don't have a parent-child relationship. Choose a partner who treats you like an adult. Aww, look at this. Look at this, we got somebody crying on here because I'm, on, um, I'm out here telling girls not to kiss selfish short-term thinkers and we got somebody crying in my comments right now. Thoughts on arranged marriages. They actually tend to work out pretty well um, because people come into this with like, it's, it, it's in them. It's in their mindset that they're gonna come into this relationship and learn how to love each other. So arranged marriages tend to stay together and work out better than a lot of our, our marriages that are happening nowadays. So. I think arranged marriages uh, are great. You know, the, the parents who themselves have been the product of arranged marriages help their children navigate falling in love with each other and being good spouses to each other. So there's this education that trickles down from the top and helps the children have a successful marriage. Um, parents often act as marriage counselors for their children, walking them through the process of conflict resolution so i think there's nothing wrong with arranged marriages they can be very successful i love your vids so much i sent them to my boyfriend all the time to tell him to be better that's so cute that's so cute what do you do when you get back with an ex-husband that cheated but now have resentment um, get fix that shit if you if you feel that they are now trustworthy. Fix that shit does help you deal with resentment or you can come get coaching. But my husband and I fought for 10 years. I definitely had a lot of resentment that I needed to let go of, not for cheating, but other reasons. And so I do understand the process of bringing yourself back from that edge of, um, being really unhappy with your partner and your relationship and coming back to a place where you feel very solid and in love and cohesive together. Oh, I feel bad. I was in a parent-child type relationship because my ex was very immature. Yeah. Yeah. Open relationships. I have nothing against what uh, consenting adults choose to do and are happy with. So as long as everybody's happy, I have nothing to say about open relationships. Do you do payment plans? Um, I, yeah, I can do payment plans. Um, if that's something you need to talk about, then, uh, you know, send me an email and we can work something out. 
Oh, my mom watched my husband and I shout at each other and helped us. I love her. Good mama. Oh, Tip Daddy. Are you, are you still here? This is, I don't know, how come? How come? What's going on? So uh, I did I did an interview with uh, Tuk Daddy. He's a he's a rising TikTok star. He does great videos. I love his I love his videos, and um, <clears throat> we both have talked about how you know putting your partner first is actually putting your children first. There are people who say I put my children first in, you know, no matter what, and I say if you put your partner first, you are putting your children first because you are modeling a healthy relationship for them because they will leave home one day and have their own relationship. And if you haven't taken the time to model being a cohesive couple and showing your love and devotion towards each other, then they don't know how to relationship properly. So you sh listen, like the kids are screaming. If they're not on fire, I don't care how much they're screaming. When your partner comes home, you go meet them at the door, you give them a smile, you give them a kiss, right? Like. In that moment, you're not paying attention to your kids and they're screaming bloody murder. Who cares? My husband's home. I'm going to make sure he comes to that door with a smile because I'm going to go greet him and go, mm, baby, I'm so glad you're here. Right? And, and so the kids get to witness their parents loving each other. And it's monkey see, monkey do. If they witness their parents loving each other, then they will love their partner. Um, so... Anyways, uh, both of us had our comments blow up when we talked about this subject. I stitched his video and he got a lot of negative comments in his video and and I, I stitched his video and I was like, hey, like you need to realize this is what we're talking about here. So apparently his comment section is blowing up again. <laughs> so cute. Hello, lovely. Hello, lovely. You are still here. Let's see. Do you want to come on? Do you want to come on and talk with me? I'm going to do the I guess. Allow guess. If you want, I just opened it up for a chit chat if you want to come in. Did you and your husband tend to work? Did you and your husband ever use foul language? Yeah, we swore, but we didn't call each other names. That was, I drew that line. Um, I think he called me like the first time we had a fan. Did you and your husband ever use foul language? Yeah, we swore, but we didn't call each other names. That was, I drew that line. Um, I think he called me like the first time we had a fight or the second time or something. He, each other name, like, why are you being such a bitch or something like that? Like, and, and I said, no, 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 no. We don't call each other names. I don't do that to you because I don't want that in our relationship. What are your career goals and accomplishments you want to achieve in the future? Ooh, I wanna be Oprah. I don't want to have my own TV network, but I definitely want to have a a really big reach. I want a lot of people to come to me for advice because it makes their life better and to take what they learn from me and spread it out into the world. So I really want to be that big, you guys. I really want to have that much of an influence. Oh, I'm bringing in a friend, you guys. Hello. Hi, how are you? I'm so good. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Having a lot of fun replying to my comments right now. Is it the same video? No, it's um so I made a video uh about the six week uh postpartum partum uh you know after pregnancy, right? And how uh basically the, the video is is kind of displaying how excited I am about the six week postpartum, right? Because we okay. know what it means, right? Right. And obviously I'm posting this video with having our experience in the back of our mind. So with wifey being really looking forward to the six week, knowing that, you know, she was ready before then, but you know, first baby, we're following doctor's order, right? So I'm posting this video with that in mind and I didn't think my comments would blow up with so many negative comments. It's amazing. Uh, a, a lot of people talking about leave her alone, make sure you wait until she's ready. Uh, 
like a lady even said men disgust me with such behavior and i'm like it's like the the, the assumptions are really interesting you know what i mean because i thought in my opinion a healthy couple you guys are looking forward to that time together it's not just the men or the women right we're we're both looking forward to that time together and i i i, I really didn't think my comments would blow up with so much negativity right and it seems to me that a lot of women are hurt um and have been exposed to a negative experience after pregnancy um when it comes to their relationship so i can definitely understand that you know i i, I can definitely see where people are coming from i just didn't think it was something so general right so it kind of it kind of like blew my mind. I was like, wow. Cause to me, I'd never thought about that. Right. And wife, wifey and I were extremely excited after each, each pregnancy. And I really never thought about, you know, women who may have not experienced, who may have not had that positive experience after pregnancy. Right. So this is what's happening in my comments right now. A lot of women, you know, talking about that, talking about, how men force themselves, you know, or I guess force their partner after uh, after pregnancy to engage into, you know, intercourse and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And, and, but now I can see it because obviously we have a great experience. So I'm posting videos through the lens of my own experience, right? Mm-hmm. Not through a general lens. And uh, so, yeah, that's what's happening right now. The video has uh, almost, I think, 800,000 views right now. And the comments are, it's, and I'm going back and forth trying to explain, like, guys, like, my, like, I, I can't, I can't capture everything within 60 seconds. So I can't give you guys all the details of how the six week came about, right? Yeah. But it's the assumption like so some someone called me like people calling me names like really like you know as if i did something extremely wrong but in my experience like i was scared after the six weeks because you know i'm first dad i don't know what's going on down there and she was more excited about it because she knows her body right and and so for us it was actually the other way around i was the one that was worried about it she wasn't that much right and uh so just to see how people are coming at me right now with the men are all men are like that all men all men that's all we think about that's all we want we're not considering like she just pushed the baby out leave her alone i'm like why would i try to harm my wife yeah like it's you know that's like i'm like when people don't take a second to just think why would this guy would want to harm his wife like we understand what why there is a you know this time period between pregnancy and being able to to engage in sexual activity again right Mm -hmm. so i'm like why would you guys just assume that just assume that i'm just this terrible guy you know, giving terrible advice just because, I, you know, I just thought it was interesting. It's social media, you know, you get that. But I did notice that there's a lot more negativity than positivity, which is very unlikely in my comment section. And I'm just wondering, like, what what is it that people see, that people feel Do people have PTSD? Like, why do they feel triggered? Why do they feel that way based on a simple video that could have so many meanings, you know, and you decide to run with the worst one, the worst case scenario possible? So I'm... I'm, I'm... Here's here's what what you're going to understand. Um, If you've never experienced it, then you yeah. have no concept of its existence. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. And so 
they've never, the people who are vomiting, they're vomiting their own experience. Like Michelle said, um, cause these people are used to meeting selfish short-term thinkers. Yeah. So all of these people, every single one of them hasn't had the experience of having a child with a generous long-term thinker. So they're just vomiting their, their view of the world, their jaded view, because mm -hmm. they can imagine there's something better because they haven't experienced it yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I agree 100% because to me, there's no other reason why you would see things like that. Like, unless you ex had a bad experience, a negative experience, there's no way, there's no reason you should feel that way. And, and, and the flip side on that is I'm realizing a lot of women are hurt, you know, yeah. that, that, that's, that's the flip side on that, that I'm, that I'm realizing. And that that's the truth that, you know, we have to take into consideration, you know, and, and, and I'm realizing that, man some some men really don't get it like it's guys you know it's but yeah. i see both i see both sides i see the the wood I, I understand why women are hurt i mean okay. it is a grueling nine months I, I witnessed my wife all two times and i'm like okay yeah that's bad <laughs> you know but yeah. so, so, so i understand but also it's it's, it's very unfortunate that because it's such a beautiful experience like pregnancy like that that whole thing as a couple for us was such a beautiful experience you know and it was there was no pain there was no you know there was the physical pain of course of the the, the labor i'm not talking about there's no pain in terms of her physically delivering the kid but i mean there was no mental pain there was no it was a positive moment you know from the moment she got pregnant until she you know gave birth to our first child and you know to our second child there was no there was no negativity we truly enjoy the process right and to realize that some people are not able to do that for whatever reason i find that very unfortunate and i'm wondering does that even trickle down eventually on the family you know, on, 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 on how the entire family moves forward, right? Because when you're not able to enjoy the very, their, those very first moment, in my opinion, it kind of sets the tone for everything else, right? Yeah. So um, it's, it's, it's interesting. It's interesting to, uh, to, to see what people are going through, how people react to certain situation. Uh, but I really wish that people just didn't assume so quick you know because it does hurt a little bit it does hurt when you know when i'm posting you know what i post right you know the type of content that i post and to get you know to get to being called names just based on assumption you know you, you can you can brush it off a little bit but at some point you know you you also think about it you know and uh uh but yeah anyway that's that's what's happening on my page right now just talking about pregnancy and 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 how people are you know viewing that time and how many women because i it really seemed that a lot of women are making this generalization that men are just thinking about that like that's for the entire time that's just all we're thinking you know and to me my experience I was ready to never have sex with my wife again. That's that's how that's how scared I was of you know how, what what damage my son caused to her. You know, I was like, hey, listen, no, you going you gonna heal first, and and uh, uh, you know, so it's it's kind of it, it's kind of mind bending to mm -hmm. to see like to have people calling you one thing because they assume based on one video, but also knowing the reality, but also having to feel for those people because you know where they're coming from. You understand where they're coming from. They're coming from a place of hurt. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's kind of mind bending to, 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 but to, you know, to, to, to look at all that and, and, and balance it out. And, uh, but that gives me, in my opinion, another, chance to 
talk about something that may help guys. You know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. Oh, congratulations, by the way. Thanks. Yes. Yes. Thanks. thanks, thanks. Three. Yeah, 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 yeah. Number three's on the way. Number three's on the way. Uh, I'm super excited. I hope it's a girl. I hope it's a girl. Ah. Uh, so yeah. Does it bother you what your wife's new body looks like? My wife is fine. Mm -hmm. My wife is fine. I don't know what people say. Like, she, to answer your question, no. No, absolutely not. I, I look at my wife the same way I look at her the, the very first day. Um, and to be honest, her new body is kind of fire. You know, yeah. we got some, we got some, we got some new curves that were that that weren't yeah. there before. So, uh, you know, now it's you know, and she she takes care of herself. Um, I, you know, to me, my wife could could gain three hundred pounds right now. I would see her the same way. Ah, uh, yeah, amazing. yeah. Uh, I, I would see her the same way. And I told her, I told her last time too, because she was kind of insecure and I, and I'm sorry, I'm going to give you guys a lot of information, but I, I would love my wife. If I could have sex with my wife 15 times a day, I would. Um, and one day she asked me like, why? I'm like, you're, I love you. Like, it's not just physical. It's like, I feel like when, in that moment, there's just more than just the physical. You know what I mean? It's like, there's that connection. There's that connection. There's like, we kiss when, you know, we like, it's not just, it's not just the fact that it's not just the act. Like mm -hmm. it's an exchange. It's an exchange of love. You know what I mean? So that exchange of love has nothing to do with what you look like. Yeah. Right. So, so I feel like to me, she could gain 300 pounds. She could lose 300 pounds. She'd be the same to me. That exchange of love is not going to change. Right. So, uh, no, my, her new body doesn't bother me whatsoever. Yeah. They're loving you. My comments, by the way. Oh, thanks. Thanks um, guys. Yeah. Um, for those of you who are watching, by the way, we've had a chat before. Uh, you can find uh, our conversation in my podcast. You can find it on my YouTube channel. I'm so glad you showed up tonight. Um, yeah, it's I, everyone's fun. calling you a real man. Uh, <laughs> right? Thank you, guys. I, I thank love you this guys. man. They're calling you a... Yes, they're saying you're such a good man. Uh, somebody, I have somebody here who's a fan of yours because they're saying, oh, my God, my face. Thank God I didn't miss this. Ah, uh, awesome. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they're that's loving cool, you. But, um, you are a good man. You are a good man, and that's that's why thank we're you. friends. This is why thank I talk you. to you because thank I you. recognize that I saw that for so long, and I was so excited about having a conversation with you because um, you just you like like man is a verb, right? Man <laughs> is what you do. Man is the effort yeah. that you put in, and I see you putting that in that effort, and I think it's so yeah. amazing. Yeah, I mean. I have a great example, you know, I, I always give credit to my parents, you know, they've, they've worked really hard and, and, you know, it's, it's, I just don't really know how to behave any other way. Like, it's, that's just who I am. Like, I, I've always wanted to be a hands-on dad, like literally dreamed of being a hands-on dad. Like some people dreamed about becoming a doctor, becoming a lot. I dreamed about being a hands-on dad and taking my kids to the park. And, and so that's what I do. It's, it's, it's really, it's really who I am. Like I, I, you know, first of all, I, I was instilled really great values by my parents and, and, and it's just, I just handle my entire life based on those core values. You know, I try to be, mm -hmm good person no matter what i try to treat people right you know i try to admit when i'm wrong when i mess up you know i try to do that as well uh but yeah i feel like i feel like 
like you said, being a man is a is is a verb. Like I really like how you said that. I really yeah. like how you said that. It's it's mm -hmm. really about the actions that you put in, you know, what you do for others and and how you help others, how you carry yourself. And I feel like I feel like people can see that about me a little bit because uh, I, I do expose my, my personal life a lot. Like, for example, I was giving my sons a bath earlier and I was on live and people could see just my everyday life. Like when I'm saying I help my wife, like yeah. I put my money where my mouth is. Like I'm not just telling you guys, go help your wife and then, you know, don't practice what I preach. I truly... I'm a hands-on dad. I really am. Like I, I give my sons bath. I, I put them to bed. I give them food. I take them to daycare. I, you know, it's I try to do that because that's that's just who I want to be, and and uh, it's, you know, that's I feel like being able to share that with people, especially young men. You know, I feel like young men nowadays they, they. You know, social media a little bit kind of gives people this flawed, flawed version or flawed, I guess, perception of what a good relationship is and what a solid relationship is. So to me, you know, being able to showcase what it truly is, you know, and I get a lot of messages from young guys that say, talking about, you know, I'm, I'm helping them, you know, navigate through that time. That's really, that's right. really to me what it's all about because... I know there's so many people who can use just a little bit of guidance. Mm -hmm. Just a little bit. Because I know myself, I know what I went through, and I know I needed guidance at a particular uh, uh, you know, point in time in my life that I couldn't get. Mm -hmm. You know? And and if I'm able to provide that to guys, you know, love it. Are you writing your book? I am. I yeah. am, yeah. Yeah, I am. Oh, I'm writing my book. I am probably a third. I have three chapters down. Yeah. I have three chapters down. I'm 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 aiming for ten to twelve chapters. Uh, but slowly but surely coming together. And I'm, I'm and I'm always I always have this million ideas that I'm trying to put together, and I find that to me that's the hardest is how to put like those idea that those ideas together in such way that they flow that yeah. people can uh you know can easily easily take in and grasp because one thing i noticed with a lot of book that i've read it's a lot of kind of all over the place you know it's it's i want something that a book that's literally you take it out you need to answer for something, you read it, you understand, and you go and look for your answer. That, that's really what I'm trying to do. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'm putting my ideas together, uh, putting down my ideas together. I've got three chapters now, and uh, I'm hoping by, by the end of the summer, I can start, I can start uh, you know, editing the book and, and start marketing it. And uh, But I'm really looking forward to it i'm really excited i have a, i have another few projects there on uh, on the way to uh same to help people uh so i'm excited about that um but yeah nice mm -hmm. i'm super proud of you thank you yeah i'm so happy thank that you you're on tiktok i'm happy that you're teaching what you're teaching i'm happy you yeah. have a baby on the way yeah that's that's yeah. life is good life is good but i gotta i have to give you credit though a lot of credit because you know like i said the first time we talked i noticed what you were talking about and and that helped me with my wife we had that conversation back then you know back in august 2020 what my wife and i were going through it and you know, I, I, I saw some of your videos and, and, and it was came on, on some of your lives and was able to to understand my wife through you guys, you, through you guys' eyes. Right. Because yeah. sometimes, you know, you in that relationship and you you build those biases, start thinking, oh, wife is always like that or he's always like that. 
but then I was able to come on your live and listen to you guys and read other women having the same complaints that my wife had and understanding that, okay, she's not crazy. She's not tripping. She's really trying to convey a message that I'm not understanding. And I was only able to understand it through you guys' eyes. So again, I got to give you a lot of credit for that. A lot of, a lot of flowers for helping us <laughs> unknowingly, unknowingly helping us uh, uh, better our relationship. Like I said, remember we haven't fought since. I think yeah. I had told you that we have not fought since, not one single fight. We argue, you know, like everybody else, but not one fight. So, guys, if you're listening to me, listen to Chantal, listen to her, listen to her, listen to her. Tell your men to listen to her, especially. <laughs> and if he doesn't like me, that's a red flag. That Yep. And because, and you know, it's 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 a it's always good to have different perspective and, and, and to, to understand, like when my wife says something, I may be biased and be like, Oh no, it's just my wife. But if I hear a lot of women say the same thing, like this is what we're going through. Like when we're dealing with men, knowing that I'm a man, now I have a different, you know, I have a different perspective because it's not my wife saying it. Right. right. Um, so just having that perspective, you know, that different perspective that will help you navigate through things is really, really important. Um, and, uh, you know, we're a young couple. I'm, I'm only 31. My wife is, is 29. And uh, we have a lot of, lot of things to learn. And just the fact that we haven't fought since, like, you just don't, like, I, was for, I will forever be grateful for that one life I hopped in and I saw this this girl talking about her experience because I was really able to take that and then see what my wife was seeing you know uh, so I'm very grateful for that having fought baby number three is on the way life is good ah, I'm so happy yeah right? yeah thank yeah. you for having I'm really glad you well, thank I, you I think for having me says- yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I think somebody uh, pre- even sent you a tip. Pardon? I think somebody even sent you a tip from my page. Oh no way. Yes. No way. Well, thank you guys. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. This was yes, a. This was really. This was really nice, and uh, maybe we'll do it again. I'm. I'm, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go and check on my comments here to see yeah. all the all the angry people. <laughs> <laughs> Block the ones that are calling you names. That's not okay. I will. I will. Good. All right, my love. All right. Good. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. You take care, all right? Bye. All right, bye-bye. Giovanna. Hello, my love. I see you. Oh, beautiful. That was sweet. That was sweet. I like him. He's such a good man. He is. You guys are so right. He really is such a good man. Hello, Giovanna. Hello, lovelies. All right. 1130. Um. Hey. Hello, Alyssa. Oh, uh, Oh, messy breakup. I saw somebody pop on earlier say that they left. I missed you too. Uh, somebody left a nine-month relationship. Somebody left somebody toxic. Um, so said that uh, they felt like my lives gave them the strength to do that. I'm really, I was really happy that. Um, I don't know if you're still here, my love, but freedom bell for that for leaving behind a relationship that you shouldn't be in good 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 so super proud of you i saw you got lots of support here too the way he just like i love my wife she's fine i know that was so amazing i left the nine month relationship allison good for you good girl good girl my love good 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 we're so proud of you you deserve better Willing to work with me. Are you now? Country girl. Oh, best way to open up physically after a toxic relationship when in a healthy one. Oh, when your partner is willing to work with you. I would suggest coaching. 
um, I would suggest coaching my love so that I can uh, guide you through that um, emotional and mental maze and give you the scripts that you need to communicate what you want to communicate. Uh oh, messy breakup, lots of misunderstandings. Now the whole family hates him. How to navigate reconciliation? Um, I would suggest a coaching session for that. Um, like as as I don't I don't know what went wrong. I don't know if this is a selfish short term thinker. I'm not sure if this is worth you know a reconciliation. Um, so I would suggest a coaching session to clarify all that. This is amazing. Yeah, it is. It's so good. If the whole family hates him, but there's a lot of misunderstanding, what can we do? You know, he would, he just needs to be the sort of person that they fall in love with consistently, right? The behavior needs to, uh, beha the behavior needs to be consistent and he needs to show up consistently as the sort of person that they would fall in love with. I left a 10-year relationship. I feel shattered. I have a book for you, my love. It's Come Back Queen. This is the book that's going to help you put your heart back together. See how it's like a broken heart? This is the one. If you want to put your heart back together, Come Back Queen is the book that's going to help you through that. So just left a two-year toxic relationship. We have a child. Any opinions on co-parenting? So fix that shit is a great book. So just left a two-year toxic relationship. We have a child. Any opinions on co-parenting? So fix that shit is a great book for learning how to co opinions on co uh, with peace and cooperation. There's a lot of ninja mind tricks in here that gain you peace and cooperation in your relationship. You're no longer together as a couple, but you still have a relationship. This book is gonna help you navigate this relationship so that the two of you can co-parent well. It's important to have peace and cooperation between the two of you. So this is a book that's gonna help you gain that. Uh, after two divorces, want to find my life partner. Which book of yours do you suggest? No more assholes. 100% all the way. Yes, yeah, so if you're having a hard time with co-parenting, do what's and fix that shit. Oh, I have that book. Good, good, good. I'll get started reading. Yes, 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 yes. Not a paperweight. Not a paperweight. Read the book. Do what's in the book. Do you have coaching sessions tomorrow? Yes, I do. Actually, I do have openings tomorrow. Um, go to my bio, click on the link tree, click the coaching button. I think it's button number two in the link tree in my bio. Make sure you read the instructions. Follow the three steps to book yourself in for a session. Um, and yeah, so you're going to see once you pre-purchase your session, go back to that page. Uh, click the button that says click here to book your session. You're going to see all my availabilities, but I do have openings tomorrow. Um, I had somebody take a 3 p.m. I had to delete that. Had to do de the 3.30. Um, yeah, is, let me see. I, there is a session open tomorrow, my love. Um, so do check that out. Allison. You are welcome. What is Comeback Queen about? This is the book that helps you get over a breakup. Giovanna. Giovanna had a coaching session. Uh, way less fights. Yay. Good, good, good. I'm so here for that goodness. So here for that goodness. Thoughts on dealing with self-imposed pressure when with a new partner. Um, so meditate, right? 
and and be really super conscious of everything that you do moment by moment by moment i don't know what you mean by self-imposed pressure um right but you can you can try meditating um i do have what i don't know if you have a new partner or if you're going to get a new partner if you are single and you're male i do have a dating book out for you it's called the perfect play you can access it through the link to my bio that first button is going to get you to amazon.com where the book is listed um but if you're in a different country just make sure you're on your country's amazon page and you could purchase it through amazon uh but yeah i just uh i just released it a few weeks ago Queen, I lost your page for forever. Finally found it again. Welcome back, Brittany. Welcome back. I w I've been struggling to sleep even though I'm tired recently. Any tips? Yes, my love, start meditating. There's a meditation resource button in the link to my bio. It's got a guide. It's got a track that you can start with. There is a um, there's a, a chart that you can start tracking your minutes to make sure you're getting in at least the minimum uh like the weekly minimum so do hit that meditation resource button meditation helps you sleep you do sleep better when you start meditating so uh get started with meditation so you can improve your sleep boyfriend says he'll come home soon but then comes home an hour or two later so it sounds like you are aware of his clock right I have a friend, Melissa. Melissa lives on Melissa time. Melissa time is plus one hour. So when Melissa says noon, I know it means one. So your boyfriend, when he says soon, means plus two hours. So when he says soon, look at the clock and go two hours. And then you're not going to fight because your soon and his soon mean two different things. Now that you understand what his soon means, apply his definition to his soon and say okay plus two hours instead of your definition if you say soon that means 15 minutes but that's not his definition so don't apply your definition to his words apply his definition to his words <laughs> you just blew my mind with that explanation <laughs> tory time plus one hour yes michelle <laughs> you guys are so cute. We don't need to turn little things into big fights. We never, never, never need to turn little things into big fights. Guys, part of me knows I should be getting off because I've been doing my life for over two hours now. I should be leaving. I should be leaving. Um, does anybody want a book walkthrough before I go? Does anybody want me to do a book walkthrough on my my eight books? Number nine is up on Amazon. Oh, this is cute. I have an aunt who got a special wedding invitation for her time because she's always late. See? Super smart. When you know your people, you you know, it's just you accept them with grace. You take them into account. Okay, I see all these yeses. Okay, book walk through. Uh, you have and I loved it. My husband was playing video games, so I had you. Ah, love this. Okay, my loves. Uh, so book walkthrough, Come Back Clean is the book that's going to help you get over a breakup. If your heart is still hurting from your last relationship, Come Back Clean is the book that's going to help you put it back together. No More Assholes is then going to help you find your ideal partner, a generous long-term thinker who loves you. No More Selfish Short-Term Thinkers. After the First Kiss is going to help you settle into this relationship. You're going to move from the courtship phase to the reality phase with very little insecurity if you prepare yourself for what to expect as you transition. Uh, fix That Shit is going to help you unpack the emotional baggage you've been dragging around with you and vomiting into your relationships. Uh, you're going to reduce your stress, fear, and anxiety, learn how to manage your emotions, learn how to resolve conflict in your relationship, understand your partner better, up your level of self-love, and increase your happiness. Seriously, you guys, no joke. Um, 
Custom made goes really well with Fix That Shit. By the way, you can get Fix That Shit in audiobook through the link tree in my bio only. It's not on Audible and you can get all my books on Amazon or anywhere you buy books online if you want like ebook or paperback. Um, custom made is going to help you uncover what your purpose is, your passion, that thing that you're designed to do. If you don't know yet, you're going to figure it out and I'm going to teach you how to monetize it because I want you to get paid doing what you love. Boyfriend and I don't share hobbies. That's okay. My husband and I don't share hobbies either. But if you want a boyfriend who shares a hobby, then make sure before you kiss your next partner that you share hobbies with them. So if that was a fundamental value, then you made a mistake getting into a relationship where they didn't share your fundamental value. So if you're now realizing it's your fundamental value, maybe you realize this isn't the relationship for you and you will make sure your next relationship, the two of you share hobbies. Uh, Dating 101, this is Understanding the Drives, Behaviors, and Emotions Behind Love. This is the book I wrote to get into high schools as a sex ed guide. Um, no swearing in it, so mamas and papas, you can get this for your teenagers. Fake Loney Not Apply, How to Avoid Posers, Losers, Scammers, and Predators. This one is a free book in the link tree in my bio, uh, ebook format, so if you want to grab it, go ahead. How do you set boundaries to stop violence? You dump the motherfucker and you never let them back in your life. That's how you do it. That's how you do it. That's how you do it. When they put their hands on you, it is goodbye. They don't get a second chance to do that, okay? Just so you understand, they gave themselves permission to do that. You don't give them permission to do it a second time. Goodbye. I will not be in a relationship with somebody who gives themselves permission to be physically abusive towards me. Goodbye. You know better and you did that. Goodbye. I will not be in a relationship with somebody who doesn't control themselves. Goodbye. That's how you set that boundary. You say goodbye to the person who does that to you. Uh, say yes to goodness. This book is about your life. So 10 areas of your life that affect you, how to navigate them properly so that you are happy. Sometimes you have bad moments. I will not entertain you if you will make excuses for their behavior. Just so you know, we don't come here to make excuses for our behavior or someone else's bad behaviors. Somebody who put their hands on you because they had a bad moment needs to go. If you're gonna stay here and argue that they should stay with you, you don't belong here. This is a page where we level up. If you insist on staying with somebody who's physically abusive, that is your responsibility, but I don't entertain that. I will not make excuses with you. I will not allow excuses. Here, we level up. If you want to come here to level up, you are welcome here. But if you want to come here to make excuses for people who are physically abusive, not here. Not here. And this is coming from somebody who has been in an abusive relationship. So I'm not taking this high horse stance having never experienced that. I know better. And I know you know better. But you're making excuses for him. And I'm not going to sit here and, and listen to that because both of us know better. So willful ignorance will not work on this platform. Here, we become educated and we level up. I want them all. You're welcome, my loves. I do not enable. You're right, my love. We do, we do not enable. Okay. No excuses. Good, 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 Brittany. No excuses. He gots to go, my love. He gots to go. Like, you know, you can, it's, it's, it's not that you don't love them. I'm sure you do but you simply cannot allow this. Uh, is it okay to be attracted to others and not acting on it when you're in a relationship? Being attracted to others is normal. 
So yes, it's okay. Thoughts are okay. Acting on it is where you become a cheater. Um, so thoughts are okay. Just don't turn thoughts into behaviors. I don't love him. Okay, so it's time to go. Uh, any advice about moving on from an abuser? You. So here's basically get your housing, get your place, know where you're going to go, have it ready for you to leave. And the day you tell them is the day you're leaving. Uh, involve your family, like like have your, your people m know what's going on so they can help you make sure that you're safe. Um, and, uh, and involve the authorities as well. Talk to a lawyer if need be, if you're married to them or have kids with them, uh, talk to a lawyer, but get your place and tell them the day you're leaving and leave. You tell them and you leave. And if they are violent, you don't tell them in person. You pack up and you leave when they're gone and, and you can text them. If you don't know how to leave, come get a coaching session. But honestly, if you don't know how to leave, it's you're you are, um, uh, you're just not bothering to learn, right? If you, because Google has everything, Google like if you Google how to leave an abuser, there's pages and pages and pages and pages and pages of how to leave an abuser, right? You saying I don't know how to leave that's not true you're just you're choosing not to because it's easier you're 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 feeling like it's too much of an obstacle because of what you're telling yourself and what you're telling yourself is i don't know how to leave instead of telling yourself i will learn how to leave i will figure out how to leave so the dialogue in your head is what needs to change to get yourself going anybody who wants to get a, a session uh go to my bio click on the link tree there's a coaching button there. It takes you to a page. Follow the three steps to book yourself in for a session. What are your thoughts about being attracted to others during a relationship but not acting on it? It's normal. We're not monogamous by nature. We're not beavers. We're not swans. We're not voles. We're humans. Who here has a celebrity crush? Who here has a celebrity crush? I stayed three years in an abusive relationship. Um, what I was telling myself is what was keeping me in it. When I told myself I had enough, when I told myself I will leave, that's when I did it. <clears throat> Jason Momoa. Yes, a lot of Harry Styles, Lady Gaga. Right? So the fact that we have celebrity crushes is proof that we are not monogamous by nature. Michelle, I know you love your man, right? But you're looking at someone else going, mm, I'd be nice too, right? And and like it's not that we want to leave our partner, but we we still look at other people and go, mm, that's nice too, right? That's nice too. That's nice too. Which means we're not monogamous by nature. So it's absolutely normal to look at other people and go, mm, that's nice too. Totally normal. It's acting on it that takes you into the realm of doing something that is wrong. And the only reason why it's wrong is because you got into a relationship with somebody who chose a monogamous relationship. So it's, so, it's okay to have these thoughts, but when you act on it, that's when you betray the person who thought they were having a monogamous relationship. Having those thoughts doesn't make you um, a cheater, but acting on it does. Emma Watson, I have a few, <laughs> Michelle. Hi, 
How long to wait before officially dating somebody? Use a no kissing for three months dating rule. No kissing, no sleepovers uh, for three months. Brittany doesn't have one. Kevin Hart. So much attitude in his little body. Dermot Kennedy. Mine is Robert Downey Jr. Hello, Robert Downey Jr. Uh, who wants a notification when I go live? Say I do. Look at the menu, just don't order. Good way to put it. I'm going to keep binging on your videos. I love it. Act on it is when you do anything that is a behavior. If you don't know the difference between a thought and a behavior, that's a problem. You do wonderful service. Thank you. You're so welcome. Hello, my I do's. Dax Shepard. Those of you who want a notification when I go live. Yeah, Kevin Hart did cheat a lot. That's that's not sexy. It's very it's very not sexy. Those of you who want a notification when I go live, click my picture up here once or twice. You're gonna get a pop up, and the pop up is a bell right around here. Uh, click on the bell when you do that. Say I just did. Uh, my husband says every guy has a crush on Ryan Reynolds. I know that's a thing, isn't it? That's a thing. Does your husband, if you, if we said that to my husband, he'd be like, no. He's so funny. Baby, do you have a crush on Ryan Reynolds? No. He, he would, he would, he would just, he would say it like that. Uh, do, do, do. Uh, okay, I'm done. I love it. Okay, guys, do make sure you go follow me on Instagram. I'm doing another coaching giveaway. I'm giving away a one hour coaching session on Instagram. I do this every month. Uh, the next one is coming up soon. So go follow me on Instagram so you can take part in that. I am going to go. I'm going to head out. Uh, make sure you go grab my books on Amazon or anywhere you buy books online. If you want an audiobook, Fix That Shit is an audiobook. I narrate it. So if you like my voice, you like what I teach, you're gonna love Fix That Shit in audiobook, only in the link to my bio, by the way. Uh, you can get a coaching session, a one-on-one -on -one session to figure out what is confusing you, gain some clarity, gain some tools, uh, gain a plan for what it is that you're trying to work through. Uh, the button for that is in the link to my bio. You're gonna find a lot of stuff in the link to my bio. You're gonna find the button for my men's dating book, which just came out my podcast, my YouTube channel, there's a meditation resource button, there's a free book, there's a free long distance guide, lots of stuff in there. I got a merch store. Oh my God, somebody made a TikTok today with, she she got the Dump the Motherfucker sweatshirt and she made a TikTok wearing it. Super cute. Uh, so go check all that stuff out because I, I got so much free stuff I like to give you guys. So go get it, okay? Mwah. I love you. You know I don't stay away for long.